Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling is in Beautiful. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at what's new here on the Zim site. Down at the bottom, in the gold bars, is a lab. And the lab has taken the place of Zoo. Zoo was a place where we could code Zim right in the browser. And there were some animals uh, at the top, and, and, and they were cool. Do you want to see it? <laughs> what's old? So here's what's old. Uh, zimjs.com slash zoo.html. So there was a monkey. We may as well say goodbye to the old. So there was a monkey. Shall we put them all on at once? And what that does is it puts some monkey code in there. So that's for a sprite. And then there was a snake. And that just added snake code. There's a lion and a giraffe. Giraffe used physics, so it, it checked the physics. And then you can view, and here are the various things. So the monkey, we, we still have the monkey in the lab. <laughs> Monkey's left in the lab. Here's the snake, and this is the giraffe. Uh, they are very cute. A little bit complex to, to look at at the start. That was one of the issues. Like, this is a pretty complex snake going on there. You've got noise that's making uh, those sort of blob things in the back, but this is a blob being animated. And then a lion, a lion that roars as well. So <laughs> the giraffe in slow motion. And the giraffe is sort of like that inverse kinematic stuff in physics. So the, uh, they were a bit, um, a bit uh, complex, some of those. And we never really grew it out with any more animals. And also we want you to try more things than just animals. And we've got this Zim site coming up for developers. And we want to give developers a way to try Zim without having to play with animals. <laughs> so we've, uh, we've gotten rid of Zoo. Bye-bye, Zoo. Uh, and we've replaced it with Lab, which is very similar. So here's Lab, and it's similar in the way it works. But we have some more generic things that we show at the top. And let's go through and take a look at those. There's a blob. Whee! So here's the basic blob that you can uh, figure out how to play with. And then this is a circle that is animating around a blob. This blob doesn't have any fill. So that's that example. There's, now if I put, if I put, if I click the next one, it's going to add it to the blob unless I clear. And this one is an emitter. And you can do that if you want. You can put them all on the screen at once. The emitter, as soon as physics comes on, both having physics and the emitter together, the emitter in, in this capacity with this much emitting will slow down a bit. Um, and there you go. Anyway, that's uh, the emitter. Pretty cool, huh? Woo! And then there's art. Oh, once again, if I view now, we're going to have the art and the emitter both in there. So there's the art going in behind. The art is draggable in behind. But let's, uh, let's view that with just the art. So we'll clear and hit art and view. That's using the generator. <laughs> it's just like it's so, so cool. The generator basically just says, make a rectangle at 10, 10. And the point of the lab is you can go into the lab and, and, and change the lab. So that, that's the idea. The code was given to you. There is an F11 as well. So if you F11, you get full, full screen for the code. This was a generator, but it was going off the screen how we had it. And so what we did is we, we put that in there. But I'm going to comment. Oh, I can't save it. I'm going to comment that part right there. And I'm going to change it just to something like 20 and 20 here. This is how we first, this is how we first made it. You ready? So basically the generator is saying uh, make a rectangle at 20, 20 from wherever you were before and then make that 20 uh, width and 20 height. So what happens is each time it goes, because it's relative, it's going to shift. Oh, I can't save that. <laughs> maybe, I should, maybe I should make it auto, auto save it, auto test or something. Anyway, so here we view, and there they go. Brrr, 
so they just shipped it 2020 and I took a look at this and I went well that's kind of a neat pattern I sort of like it but what would happen if we went either 20 or minus 20 and so normally that's that's not the easiest thing to do but watch all we have to do is say pass in 20 or minus 20 there and Zim because that's the Zim V value Zim will pick between those two and same with here uh, well maybe put the minus 20 first this won't end up being saved for the rest of the world this is only our local version now is we're working on this so there they are that's um, that's the generator and then we hit view and now instead of always going brrr, <laughs> it does that but this version goes off the screen and you can tell it goes off the screen because there's some more stuff off the screen neat huh and what we've done is we've added at the end we said please drag the drawing because we might have other things that we're adding we put the on top true or sorry on top to false so that uh, if there are other things this this art will not come up to the top it will stay in the back and we have indeed put that art on the back of things it seems better as a as a background so if we start combining various things that will help us put the art there at the bottom for this part we're probably going to update this in uh, <laughs> probably going to update this in zim because it's a little bit unruly basically what we're saying is if the current x if the x position is less than zero so we've gone off to the left or if it's greater than the stage width we've gone off to the right or if it's less than zero then uh, in the y then we've gone off the top and then that's off the bottom if we've gone off the stage then put the stage back and look because it's relative we can't just say go to stage width divided by two stage height divided by two because that will that will just move it that amount so we're moving there and subtracting the current value or probably it'd be easier to understand uh, it in reverse where we're subtracting the current x that will take us back to zero zero and then we're adding half the stage width to start at the middle again so that's not the, the most pleasant of code for doing that. So what we'll probably do is have something that just checks to see if you're in bounds, like a, an option, if bounds, uh, or something like that. And that will do this check for you, so you don't have to do it. It'll be g.bounds, if that's true, or g dot within bounds, or something like that anyway. If that's true, then you're good. If it's if it's out of bounds, maybe it's an out of bounds. g dot out, g dot out of bounds. Ooh. Yeah, and that would return true or false. And then uh, this part can just be a reset, g dot reset, and that will reset it back to the zero, zero, and reset scale, and whatever. You can reset already with uh, a, what's called a push. So if you put a push in here, and then um, a pop, the, uh, the push will save its, its position and all of its scale and stuff, and the pop will put it back again. But if you want to go back to the very, very beginning, we would have to call a, um, a set up here, I think. Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, a setup. And in the setup, we would push, and then any time we wanted to, we could pop, and that will go back to the very beginning, like in the setup. Otherwise, it just goes back to whichever loop uh, the, or wherever you set the push. So anyway, a, a reset might be easier than doing that setup and, and pop uh, thing. Agreed? Anyway. Uh, that's the idea is you come in here you can start to play around with it as a matter of fact we could put multiple art in here we could put multiple blobs we can put multiple emitters etc here's balls <laughs> let's clear it up and see some balls yeah. Boop. <laughs> so there's a few balls falling in there uh, once again if you did add more balls so uh, we view it and now more balls are falling in although we just uh, anyway so there is the ability to do that and also join them all together. Here's the synth. Synth is a great one for having multiple. So I've just hit two synths and now we view and
those are beats. Can you hear the beats? <laughs> okay, stop! <laughs> so that's it, and you can play around with the code in that. Uh, look at that, isn't that nice? They're just uh, the volume is this dial, the pitch is that dial. Because sound has, you have to click on the app before sound works. Otherwise, we would just wire these two things. We just dot wire them to the volume and the frequency. But what we're doing is we're waiting until there's a mouse down, then we can create the tone and wire it. If we try and create the tone before there's a mouse down, unfortunately, Google followed suit with mobile and said, nah, 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 we're not going to let you play a sound until you interact with the app. So annoying. But I mean, so is sound that plays without you wanting it. So I understand both sides. But as a developer, it's a real pain not to be able to play a background sound until they, I don't know, press something that says, start the game. <laughs> it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> So anyway, that's that one. And how are you guys doing out there in the bubbling? It's almost like an explorer, isn't it? Here's a radial menu. We'll view this one where you can view things on, uh, on the air or in land. Land goes a little bit further and we look at different types of buses or different, I guess not different types of bikes, different types of cars. Yeah, there's hatchbacks and sedans. Sports car even has more. Ooh, nice and electric cars, and then when you go to SUV. <laughs> ah, sorry, if you guys are driving an SUV, oh, come on. You don't need that much stuff. They just get in the way. I can't see over them. You're losers, that's what I say. So, uh, message brought to you by electric cars. <laughs> Although there's electric SUVs too, aren't there? But no matter how you cut it, you guys, no matter how you cut it, SUV is more material, it's bigger, it's going to take up more, more power. So just get a smaller car. You don't need it that big. Got a family of four and we just had hatchbacks. No problem. All right. Uh, then there's a wig. The wig is... <laughs> let's uh, put the wig on top of... Let's see. Can we get the car? Can we get it that far? <clears throat> Almost. The, the wig does not drag. The wig just wiggles. It's, so it's a play on words with wiggles, but we can almost put that wig on the Lamborghini. Not quite. So uh, that's, that's a wig. It's fun having multiple wigs as well. Let's bring in some more wigs. Click, click, click. Ooh, multiple wigs. So we're wiggling not only the X position of the wigs, but we're also wiggling the points on there. And you can see that if you go in, and well, let's clear that and just bring in one wig. So there's one wig uh, right here. It's a blob. Uh, sorry. Maybe uh, our Zim Kids, we were going to model this on Zim Kids. Zim Kids actually has a better editor where you can view the thing right next to it. But uh, I don't mind having a full page view. That's one thing. It was a little bit more work to, to integrate it and stuff. And so just decided to keep it the same here. But one thing we may bring is a, a resize on that. I, I sort of missed that. It's pretty easy, I think, to add a resize. So I'll probably be adding that. Uh, anyway, there is, in this one, there's an F11, which, which of course, is pretty darn nice. So there you go. So here's, here's the wig. We've said these points right here were recorded at the Neopaths uh, place. And same with the blob example. We talked about where the blobs are. But if we just want to say, if we want it to be interactive true, then we can... Oh, <laughs> i got to watch that save. Also in Zoom Kids, when we save it, it automatically... It, it does, say, well, it automatically saved anyway, but it saves it and it runs it. So I don't know, maybe we want to bring that across as well. Not the F12. There we go. And what were we doing? View. So now you can see that the uh, what's happening, uh, I can't really tell though because the sticks are black. I wonder if it changed the stick color on it. Yeah, that's, that's too bad. Anyway, there is a stick in here and we're basically wiggling one of these points. We've also reduced the, the wig by two. Let's fix that up. And we could even scale, well, I'll just scale it to one there. Oh, save it. <laughs> just total habit. There we go. We could change the stick color as well. That's stick color colon white or something, but I think you can see it a little bit better now. 
Uh, oh, oh, this is interactive. Anyway, we're wiggling that stuff. We're also wiggling the top one. We're making the top one wiggle around. And we're wiggling the whole wig to make it go back and forth. And that gives this <laughs> rather silly, silly uh, um, animated wig. <laughs> wiggling wig. The wiggling wig. And why don't we leave it at that then? This has been the Zim Lab, as in a what's up bubbling at Zim Duo. I am Dr. Abstract, so you can come there anytime you want to just type in some, some Zim, try out some Zim. Just come to the Zim Lab. It's available in the gold bars down at the bottom. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Catch ciao.